and welcome. My name is Kathy A. I'm enjoying my hot cocoa here. Um, it's about a week or so before Christmas and we're having a great time uh, decorating the house and getting things pulled together. I still have not decorated the tree behind me and those are the ornaments and boxes next to the chair that have not been done yet. I have been really, we had, you know, all kinds of stuff going on this week, as you know, if you, you're watching my videos. Um, but today's show is all about Too Faced Cosmetics, and Too Faced is a brand that I really love. They're cruelty free, um, there's a lot of high end products in here, and there are some staples that I feel should be in everybody's cosmetic wardrobe. So I'm going to, this is the matte eye, which is my favorite. Anyway, um, I'm going to tell you first the story, the history of this company, and then when we come back, I'll do a full face tutorial and show you how I got to this face from the somewhat scary face straight out of the shower. So I'll be back with you in just a moment. The story of Too Faced Cosmetics begins with this guy, Jared Blandino. Growing up as a young boy in the 1980s, Jared was obsessed with the Muppets. He loved the animation and the colors and the fun, and it inspired him to draw in color. As he grew older, he actually won awards for his artwork, and he loved to illustrate and animate. He embraced the lifestyle of the 80s and its color and its fun and its day glow. Except for the clothes. He thought men's clothes were awfully dull and gray and boring. His sister wore really cool stuff. It was much more inspiring to him. She was a big inspiration for him because she was strong yet feminine. Other women like Cher and Madonna were true icons. When he graduated, he went to the California Institute of the Arts, where they call the Disney animators from. And he learned for four years, which he thought was very boring, how to animate. He became an art teacher for our grades kindergarten through sixth, and he really enjoyed that. As a young man, Jared loved to party, and after work, he would go off with his friends and disco the night away. Well, one evening when he got out of work, some executives from Estee Lauder pulled him and his friends to the side and offered him a position behind the counter of an Estee Lauder makeup counter. He knew right away, as soon as he went behind the counter and started looking at all the makeup, that it was so similar to all of the tools and art crayons and things that he used as an art instructor. He knew very little about makeup, but he learned really quick, and he loved the effect putting makeup on a woman did for her, for her self-confidence, for her beauty. He transformed her. One of the things he found a little bit limiting, though, were the colors. Estee Lauder, even though a high-quality makeup, had pretty beige colors, and he loved to mix his own specialty colors, and he became known for mixing special colors for people and became quite well sought after. He actually was promoted several times at Estee Lauder and became a regional director. Now he was sneaking products out at night to take home and work on his own line of cosmetics, which he actually used a lot of it on himself. But he eventually did get caught by security and unfortunately his time with Estee Lauder ended. But Jared discovered at that moment that this was his life's dream. This was what he was meant to do, create a makeup line. One of the first things he did was create the name, and that was inspired from his working at Estee Lauder at the counter. Many times women would come to the counter looking beautiful and pleasant and sweet and then find out that their favorite lipstick or blush was out. They would melt down, freak out, and take on a completely different face. It was like they had two faces, a face of happiness and beauty and this horrible other face. They were two-faced. So why is it spelled T-O-O? -O? It's actually because it was too much drama. It was too important to these people. And they were way too over the top. So Too Faced Cosmetics was born. But there's another face behind the Too Faced Cosmetic line. And that is Jeremy Johnson. Now Jeremy is Jared's partner. And he's also the CEO of 
Too Faced Cosmetics. He's an incredible business genius and he has marketing strategies that have made him uh, advisor to Armani and Chanel and Estee Lauder. So he took this knowledge and he created um, business strategies and financial planning for Too Faced that would enable them to take this company to the moon. Now he's a little camera shy so it's hard to find photos of him. He lets Jared take the spotlight in most cases. So the guys launched Too Faced Cosmetics in 1998 and they were quickly picked up by large department stores such as Bloomingdale's Sephora and Ulta. There are meetings every day and they discuss products with a very lively crew of people and dogs. <laughs> and Jared keeps a strong hold over the packaging and the products to make sure they embrace the whole ideal of femininity and beauty and romance. And of course his signature glitter eyeshadow is one of the first items that came out. Now their product line is very interesting, very unique, very feminine, but there's even another face behind the Too Faced line and that is the face of Envy. Now this lady represents Envy but she represents all that is good and bad in every woman. The slogan, why be pretty when you can be gorgeous, was brought up at this time and the offices at Too Faced have very familiar looking decor. Jared's sparkly glitter eyeshadow was groundbreaking for the time and also another product, the Shadow Insurance, was an eye primer that was not very common at that time. Jared of course is the main face of Too Faced but another important face is Clover. Clover is a rescue dog and a Chihuahua, one of his favorite types of dogs. And they feature actually um, shelter dogs on their website. Too Faced is cruelty free and they are PETA certified and they have vowed never to sell to China until they change the laws about animal testing. Even their teddy bear hair brushes are synthetic and they're absolutely wonderful. So together these three have created an empire called Too Faced Cosmetics. Their products were so popular and so sought after that they actually made it to the 2001 Emmy Awards as part of the goodie bags they gave to the celebrities. Jared believes that all cosmetics should have five senses of beauty to them. They should taste good, they should be touchable, they should look beautiful, they should sound good, and they should smell great. Enter the chocolate bronzer. This was just groundbreaking in the cosmetic world. Cocoa powder is very good for you and the lighter milk chocolate version was released and other bronzers were released. Now bronzers are important to Jared because his older sister who inspired him so much was unfortunately um, had stage 4 melanoma. He created several bronzers in lieu of this and they also did a charity to help donate money for funding for uh, melanoma research. Now one of his main inspirations for the line is Dior because of the quality and consistency. His products are inspired from the seasons, from everyday objects he uses, from places he's been, from love and from sweets, from TV shows like Sex and the City, which the Carrie and Big blush was released just this year. And also in Friends, we have the Rachel and Ross blush that was released this year. Too Faced makeup was also used on the Will and Grace show and The View countless movie sets and TV shows. Marie Osmond was the inspiration for a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll. We know her from the Osmonds from many years ago. And Katy Perry had that 50s pinup look from Too Faced. 
Jared designed a lipstick just for Gwen Stefani's wedding and sponsored her tour, her world domination tour. And they had a special palette for that. And of course, Carrie Underwood is one of the favorites from Too Faced. But these are really cool. These are old pulp fiction novel, novels from the 40s and 50s and 60s. And they each inspired palettes that Too Faced released. I have shown here the original book and the palette cover. There's some slight alterations here. You'll see cigarettes are missing and some of the clothing is a little more conservative than the original. But it's really fun. Very campy. And they did a pretty good job at recreating a lot of these old book covers. Now Jared himself is a great personality, a joyful person. So here's a quick little three or four minute video. I'm Jared Blandino, creative director and co-founder of Too Faced Cosmetics. Like way back in the early 90s, I was uh, teaching art to children, uh, kindergarten to sixth grade. So I was always very into art. And I stumbled upon a job uh, working behind the counter at Estee Lauder and discovered that it was just a new type of art that I loved. And I just, my whole world clicked in. Once I applied makeup to a woman and I saw the self-esteem boost that I kind of gave her, she kind of evolved right within my chair, you know, right in front of my face and with my little brush moving around, I just saw this new woman develop and I thought like this is something that's powerful. So working behind the counter, I just discovered what I loved and what I didn't love about the products that I had to work with. You know, at the time makeup was very regimented and boring and brown and it was just like, ugh. So I would get a Chanel blush and I would chop it up because it had some shimmer in it and mix it with my Estee Lauder lip gloss and I would create all these crazy, crazy things and I got this reputation. Um, for creating all of these little Jared products that would literally take four or five other products to, to develop. So I used to do this. I'd take all these products out, melt them in my microwave, mix them up, bring them back in little Tupperware cups uh, until security discovered my plans and put a stop to it because I guess that was not, you know, in the Saks Fifth Avenue rule book. I just kind of discovered the creative process was so, it's so amazing and so possible that I, I just wanted more of that and, uh, and that's kind of how to face more. If I believe in something or I really see something about it, if I see something that could be, you can't stop me. I'm like, you don't get it and I just move everybody aside till I get a yes or till I get somebody who understands it. So I'm in the lab and I, and I have this shirt from the 70s that I got at Aardvarks on Melrose and it was black with like a silver thread going through it, really cool and metallic. So I take it into the lab and I go, I want an eyeshadow that looks like this. And the, like the head manager lady's like, you can't press glitter until eyeshadow won't hold, you know. So then I go over to the little lady who's pressing eyeshadow and I'm like, listen, I want you to like put this glitter in this eyeshadow. So I run over to the lip gloss area and there's a big jar of silver glitter and I run it over to the lady and she happens to be pressing a black matte shadow and she's looking at me like, what? I'm like, just do it. Do it. It totally worked, right? So the first color I shot was born. And lip injection came for me. Um, I was up late, really late one night. I think I had a cold or something. And I was watching a commercial. A Viagra commercial came on. And it talked about how Viagra dilates blood vessels. And I thought, well, what could I do with that, you know? So that's kind of where lip injection came from. It's the same kind of technology. We are the bronzing authority in the business. We have the largest assortment and the most successful assortment of bronzers in the business. And that really came from my sister, my only sibling, my sister Lisa, being diagnosed with four-stage melanoma. I decided at that moment I was going to empower women to achieve any bronzing look they want, from matte to shimmer to glamour to natural, whatever. And I will always pursue new technology and new ideas that will allow you to get any kind of bronze that you want without ever sacrificing your health and putting, your, putting yourself in danger. Because these girls don't even know they're putting themselves in this kind of danger. They're out there tanning. They're in tanning beds and baking themselves in the sun. They have no idea. Not only are they turning their, their skin into leather, they could be killing themselves. And it's absolutely unacceptable. I grew up with my sister. She was like as feminine as you could be. She was like tube skirts, cut off tights, hit bow in the hair, Madonna bracelets going up, pointy shoes, like as feminine as you could be, but she'd also kick your ass. So I always saw like femininity as power. I never saw it as weakness. And, and now women get to be as sexy or as feminine or as fabulous as they can be and still rule the world. We don't just bring out products that can make money. They have to have a two-piece twist. They have to improve the lives of women. They have to be the best they can be the most efficacious products we can bring out with the best ingredients. Um, we're 
wrapped in the, in the most inspired packaging in the business. That's our angle. You kind of want to pull that lipstick out because it's in a gorgeous kind of tube. You want to put it on or flip that compact open. That looks like you might have found it at a vintage French market somewhere. You know, it's inspired and it's fun and it's feminine and it's fabulous. I say we hug tulips and stilettos, not trees and Birkenstocks. You know what I'm saying? You can still save the world and be glamorous. 2008 was a huge year for Jared and for Jeremy. They actually made their vows and married in 2008 under a sea of a beautiful archway of roses. This is the bridal gown. <laughs> and check out this cake. I love the Too Faced design. Now 2008 they hired uh, this is Linda Berkowitz, and she is actually the president of uh, Too Faced, and she is now with Corez Cosmetics, which is another up-and-coming line. But during 2008, Jared continued to create very fascinating makeup. He wanted to appeal to the rebel in all of us. The sexiness of all of us and the natural side of all of us. And the innocence as well. Now the packaging is stunning and like Jared explained in the video it's like you found it in some little French market. Look at the bottle for this foundation. And he has clutches and he has foundations and highlighters that are beautiful and feminine and functional and so inventive and creative with his palettes. And he has a sense of fun, a sense of humor. And their holiday offerings are always outstanding. Some of my favorites. Now, of course, Too Faced has caught the eye of many YouTube beauty bloggers, very famous ones. And I think you can't really watch a YouTube video without somebody mentioning a Too Faced cosmetic item. They actually have on their website right now a video about the Lipstick Mafia and these are beauty vloggers who they selected to be ambassadors for their lipsticks. They also have a lot of um, beauty editor uh, picks, selections, they're featured in magazines, most beauty, top beauty magazines of the day, and they're just well loved. They celebrated their 16th birthday this past year in 2014 and they released a whole new lineup of products that are quite innovative like the Leopard Highlighter Bronzer and the beautiful heart-shaped Sweetheart Blushes. The much coveted Chocolate Bar Palette which is infused with cocoa powder and has a wonderful assortment of colors and Jared's favorite release which is the Beauty Balm which is based on a Korean formula which is good for your skin. The melted lipsticks are on a lot of people's favorites of 2014 list and these are very very unique lipsticks very very opaque and that go on like a lip gloss. The holiday collection was outstanding as most of his holiday collections just blow me away and most recently the semi-sweet chocolate bar which is a slight variation off of the original was released. Jared, Jeremy and Clover have released an incredible line of cosmetics that I hope continues on and on for quite a while. In November of 2014 um, there were negotiations done for the sale of Too Faced Cosmetics but that is still uh, in the making. Whatever he does and wherever they go, we wish the best to Jeremy and Jared. And thank you so much for this fabulous brand, Too Faced Cosmetics. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story of Too Faced Cosmetics. I really like this brand a lot and I have a lot of products already from the brand and I went out and got a few other things just to complete so I could have a full face of makeup from this brand and there were some surprises in here and um, so let me just get right on it um, through the magic of time let's go back and I'll show you how I got to this face from my plain Jane face I'll be back with you in a minute 
Okay, hey there, plain person. Grab some cocoa and let's get this going. Starting this off with the Shadow Insurance Eyelid Primer. Now they have several different types of um, eyelid primers. This is just the basic one that they came out with first. Moving on to the Hangover RX Replenishing Face Primer. This is supposed to have depuffing qualities to it as well as being a regular face primer. And of course you know a primer always kind of smooths out between your skin and the foundation, makes a smoother base so your foundation goes on a little bit easier and doesn't look as chunky. I'm just waving that, airing that in. Now I'm trying the Tinted Beauty Balm and this is Vanilla Glow which I believe was the second lightest color. And I'm putting on one side of my face, I'm putting it on um, with a brush. It goes on quite nicely. It's very creamy, smooth. I might have just a little bit too much on there. <laughs> And of course, this is based on a Korean Beauty Balm formula, so it's actually good for your skin as well as uh, covering up and balancing out your skin tone. Now on the other side, I'm going to be using my Real Techniques uh, Beauty Sponge. and I'm going to kind of pounce it on that side. Sorry about my hair thing. Uh, I should have, you know, pinned everything up before I started. And I'm just kind of pouncing it on. I think it went on a lot easier with the uh, with the sponge than it did with the brush. Yeah, make sure to go around all the edges. I am distracted by a large woodpecker and a couple of small birds that are in the bird feeder on my back deck that I have mirrors there. Okay, we've got the Absolutely Flawless Concealer, and this is vanilla. I believe it's the lightest shade. And I'm just touching up a couple age spots and I'm going underneath my eyes. I like to do that little Kim Kardashian triangle. Now this formulation, I guess it works for people who have oily skin or combo skin. But for me, unfortunately, it clung to the little dry patches that I had. And the primer wasn't quite enough to uh, uh, over override that. And I'm just putting a little extra on my chin because I have some broken capillaries and stuff there. I'm going back over with the beauty sponge with just a teeny bit of the foundation just to kind of tone it down a little. I might have put a little too much on. I'm not pleased with the concealer. Now this is the chocolate bronzer. It's infused with cocoa powder. And this one is the regular one. There is a lighter shade one called milk chocolate that I think is probably a little more appropriate for my pale fish belly white skin but I've got the chocolate bronzer. That's a small single one I have. I also have it in a couple other incarnations in palettes. I really do like that bronzer. This is the Primed and Poreless Face Powder. It's a very finely milled powder. Comes with a great little powder puff and I'm just pressing powder into my skin. Watching those birds again. Sorry. So distracted. God. Now the sun keeps coming out so it looks like um, my face is glowing. This is the My Favorite Things palette and I love the blush from this. It's called Melt Into Spring. I actually like both blushes but this lower one is a little more warm toned. I'm just kind of pressing it in. Really beautiful. There's also the Snow Bunny and the Chocolate Bronzer in that palette. Now this is the Matte Eye palette and I'm actually going to use this for a matte primer and then I'm going to use the chocolate bar uh, palette for a little shimmer. So here's the chocolate bar. I'm going to go into, I think it's a pink color. I have long lost the sheet that tells you what the shades are. So um, fortunately in the brand new chocolate bar that they released, they put the names on the actual plate so you can remember what they are. It's not that important to me, but it's a nice touch. Now back to that matte palette. I really like the matte eye palette a lot because if you're over 50, it's got perfect shades, very neutral, but matte. And you can use this on very wrinkly skin, hooded eyes, and it just works like magic on older folks. It's the only palette I think that, that uh, Too Faced has put out that's completely matte. 
and I really like it. Now, if you want a shimmer or you want some sparkle, you can go to other palettes to get those extra colors, but I think this makes a perfect base eye. I use this for work often. I use my fingers a lot for um, for applying shadows, so <laughs> you're going to see me using my fingers. Now I like the combination of a light lid, dark corners, and a nice medium matte shade in the crease. And this combination seems to work well with me. Everybody has different shaped eyes, so a different technique may work for you. But I really like this one. I think it's really um, pleasant and flattering. And I'm using a larger brush with nothing on it to kind of blend out the colors a little bit. The more blending, the better, actually. And it just kind of thins it out a little so it's not quite so harsh. I'm going into that purple and going down underneath into the dark, dark brown shade underneath, just lining my eyes with that. I like lining with eyeshadow because it gives a subtler line. It's not quite so harsh. I'm going in with my finger in that blue, and that's a much more subtle blue shade than the one that appears, uh, the blueberry swirl shade that appears in the new Semi Sweet palette. Now I'm going into the chocolate bar to put some spark into it, and that is first the pink shimmery color. It's a large palette there. I'm just going to put that just underneath the arch of my brow, just a teeny bit, not a big stripe, just a little bit to catch the light. And I'm going to do my brows with the powder. And I found a nice neutral looking light brown powder. And I think powder works great for eyebrows if you um, don't have any huge patches that are missing. Otherwise, I'd recommend a pencil. And now I went into a little bit of the shimmering taupe to blend that through. Going into that black dark forest cherry color because I love that dark red. And that's the sangria color that Marsala, I, bless, I believe it's called for the 2015. That's the color and that's a perfect color for that. And I'm just using a little bit of the salted caramel color as a transitional shade. So between these two, I could create pretty much any eye look I want. Now we're moving into the three-way lash lining tool and this is one of the most unique eyeliners of any of the cosmetic lines. It has a forked edge to it and I'm using it incorrectly here. I'm poking in between my lashes on the top. I believe you're supposed to do it from the bottom. And now I'm poking and making little lash marks on my under line and it works really well for that. It actually works well to make a wing, which I'm doing now, just kind of winging it out a little bit and lining. You can kind of do a little bit of everything with it. My only complaint about this particular uh, product is that it's only in black at this time. But it is cool. Very unique. Yeah, okay, we got it, Kath. Stop. <laughs> All right, curling those lashes, and even though this this is speeded up, so you don't know that I'm actually curling them for eight seconds. I hate curling my lashes. I'm very impatient. Now this is better than sex mascara, and I'm going like really. <laughs> These people need to get out more. Um, really nice mascara. The brush is a little bit large. It's an odd shape, kind of an hourglass shape brush. I don't know what the importance of that is because. It kind of doesn't really matter when you're putting it on. You still have to go through the same gyrations. I'm putting two coats on, and it makes a really nice big honking lash. Stays all day. It doesn't leave dings on my upper lids. I really do like this mascara. It's not my favorite in the world, but it's a fabulous mascara anyway. Moving on to lips. This is the Perfect Lips Lip Liner, and this is Perfect Nude is the shade. And it's a twist up. Very, very creamy. Really, really nice uh, lip liner. I like it. Now, I'm not going to fill in my lips because I want to get a more natural look on my uh, lipstick. I want to see what the lipstick looks like without anything underneath it. And the lipstick is La Creme Lip Cream. And this color is called Nude Beach. 
And as you can see, it's pretty much close to the color of my own natural lips. And I wanted nothing too strong because I have such a strong eye. I don't want to be too Ronald McDonald. Moving on to the um, gloss. This is a lip injection power plumping gloss. This heats up. This is the one that he based on the Viagra ad. And here you have it. This is the Too Faced face <laughs> with a little help <laughs> anyway this was kind of an interesting makeup line I really felt that it was such a high quality line um, the products are great uh, their eyeshadows are iconic and um, I think the only disappointment I had with this line was with their foundations the concealer the uh, the face foundations absolutely not for dry skin. I have dry skin with wrinkles, fine lines under my eyes, and none of their foundations uh, complemented this particular condition. So I was very well moisturized, so this Beauty Balm went on uh, a lot smoother. And I think with the sponge, it went on a lot better. Uh, so the Beauty Balm was okay as far as the face products go, but you know, there's other Beauty Balms out there for less money and uh, Anyway, <laughs> so I don't think that this particular Too Faced palette gets enough attention. I think that this is something that everybody should have. <laughs> I had a streaker! Oh my gosh! <sighs> How am I going to edit that? Oh my god! My husband just streaked. <laughs> <Dear. laughs> okay, where was I? Yes, the Matte Eye palette from Too Faced to me is their best palette and um, seconded only by the original Too Faced chocolate bar. Does it bother anybody else that semi-sweet chocolate is darker than regular chocolate and that they have the semi-sweet chocolate palette is light colored. <laughs> the original chocolate palette is my favorite palette. I mean, I, I just love this. I love the color combinations. I especially love this one, which is a kind of a uh, black forest cherry or something like that. It's an absolute gorgeous color and it might even work into this new Marsala Pantone thing that everybody's going nuts over. Um, the color for 2015, I guess, is Marsala and the closest thing to that are these two shades which are are in the um, in the chocolate bar palette so and I love these shades I mean they look really beautiful on see I use my finger for that so with fallout okay <laughs> so this is something that everybody should have not just because of the cocoa powder infusion but because the color assortment is just wonderful and you've got a highlight color built in as well as a beautiful matte lid shade. You can't go any better than a matte. If you have skin over 50, this is a great lid color, all over lid color. You can wear it all the way up to your brow bone without worries about it being a big old shiny hot mess because as you know, you shouldn't have a shimmer up there at all. Underneath my eyes, um, I don't know if it was this hangover stuff, uh, the hangover primer. I did put it in. It did fill in my fine lines. So the, the foundation uh, Beauty Bomb stuff did go over much smoother. So um, this is kind of an interesting primer. I think I do like it and I could feel it tightening up stuff. So I think it is something that even with dry skin made my foundation go on flawless. So this I might actually keep because it was kind of interesting. The weirdest thing is probably the um, this eyeliner. It's supposed to be a three-way eyeliner. It's got a little forked end. It looks like a, I don't know, like a seafood fork or something. Just a tiny little forked end to it. Um, it's supposed to imitate lashes. If you push it between your lashes, it does make little dots to imitate. It looks like you have more lashes than you do. A little different than just lining your eyes with an eyeliner, but you can also use it as an eyeliner. And then also you can 
go down here and pretend to make lashes with this. So it is a three-way. This is a very interesting concept. I like the idea of this. It also makes a really nice winged tip because it goes up in a duo format so it's very even. It's easy to use but it's only in black. I'm not sure if I'm really that crazy about it but I mean it did work so it was neat. The formula does last all day. I did use this uh, recently for a long event that I attended. So, Okay so it's two weeks later and I actually have purchased the semi-sweet palette. So I thought what I would do is an alternate eye look at this point and show you um, a really nice look with this palette. Of course it is wonderful just like the original slightly thinner and it's got the wonderful cocoa powder infusion in. I'm just going to take a brush into this first color which is coconut cream now this is a matte color, so I'm just going to put it all the way on my lid, all the way up. Okay, I figured I would just speed this up and you wouldn't have to worry about me talking, but basically I'm taking that coconut cream um, up on the lip on both of them using mousse in the crease, and mousse is a wonderful medium brown neutral color. It's a better brown than the crease color that's in the original chocolate bar palette. I really like this a lot. Moving on to hot. This is a cocoa chili cocoa or cocoa chili. Just putting it in the corner. It's a nice dark shade and I'm blending it a little bit. And going into hot fudge to line. Now hot fudge is a dark dark brown with a slight gold micro glitter in it. Putting it slightly underneath my eyes halfway. Don't I look animated. Taking some of that peanut butter that everybody likes and putting that as a transition shade and then I'm using kind of a light color butter pecan or whatever it is up on the top. And that blue, that infamous blue, blueberry swirl, putting it right in the middle of my eyes. Putting a little silvery taupe to have it kind of mesh and there we go. So that is the second look using the semi-sweet palette. I really do like this palette. It's very different from the first one. So to compare the two of them, aside from the general shape of it and the smell of cocoa powder, they're two completely different palettes and there are some similarities in some of the colors, but what I'm finding is, is that a lot of these are either cooler or warmer toned than the counterparts of them. So that was Too Faced and I hope that um, you enjoyed this. I really enjoyed bringing it to you and I've discovered some products in this line that I really like. So everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful winter. It's a little chilly out here today and um, I'm looking forward to uh, bringing you some more videos. Up next will probably be um, Mali Cosmetics. And um, anyway, thank you Too Faced, a fabulous line of makeup, and thank all of you for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Have a beautiful day. Toodles.